It's Sunday, June 26th. Here's a live look over Midtown Atlanta this morning. It's already warm and muggy out with another hot day on tap. Channel Direction News Sunday AM continues right now. Live, local, late breaking. This is Channel 2 Action News Sunday AM. Coverage you can count on. Good morning, I'm Sophia Troy along with meteorologist Brian Monahan. And Brian, you're also tracking just a slight chance for rain. We will see a few more thunderstorms mm -hmm. today. Wouldn't count on seeing much though this afternoon. Better chances though as we head toward Monday and Tuesday. We are seeing a few more clouds though build up. Here's Midtown and Downtown Atlanta. Live, partly cloudy. It is hazy. It is warm, but not as hot as it was this time yesterday. We're at 83 degrees. Humidity is up there. Wind out of the east at 10. We're in the 70s now in Blairsville, Gainesville as well, but into the 80s now. Eatonton, Griffin, up toward McDonough, you're in the low 80s now. Low 80s for Carrollton, mid 80s Calhoun and Rome. Now, we do have an air quality alert, a code orange in place this afternoon into early this evening. The air quality really going to be an issue today as uh, we do see uh, the heat build and really not much of a breeze to kind of blow things around, not much rain either. So if you have respiratory issues, uh, asthma, anything like that, you want to limit your time outside this afternoon. Uh, as we go through the afternoon, we will see some isolated showers and storms develop. Here's 3 o'clock today. We'll track a couple of stronger storms popping up here and there. Most of us, though, will stay dry this afternoon. And it's going to be another hot day, just not as hot as yesterday. 88 at lunchtime. We're at 90 degrees at 2 o'clock, mainly dry. And by 4 o'clock, we have temperatures in low 90s. Coming up, tracking a better chance of showers and storms. I'll walk you through that timeline in 15 minutes. See you soon. Thank you, Brian. Developing this morning, the GBI and State Patrol are investigating an officer-involved shooting in Gainesville. One suspect is another is behind bars this morning. Channel 2's Steve Gelbach shows started in Hall County. The car chase ended here with the suspect's vehicle crashing to a state trooper's patrol car, and then the foot chase went another three quarters to a mile away down these railroad tracks. Troopers say two men inside this Ford Explorer took off from a DUI checkpoint around 8.30 Saturday night, leading officers on a high-speed chase up 985 onto Queen City Parkway. As they get closer to Industrial Boulevard, the violators start striking the trooper, hitting the trooper, and so they end up basically having a crash between them. The suspects then ran. Troopers eventually caught up to one of the men, but he wouldn't give up without a fight. A physical struggle ensued while he was trying to get him handcuffed. It was very violent confrontation for about a minute, minute and a half that it ultimately resulted in shots being fired and the violators deceased. We were outside the ER when the suspect's family members showed up to the hospital and learned of his death. They were very emotional and had no comment. Three troopers were also hurt, one during the fight. Another trooper who was chasing the other person, he had twisted and hurt his knee. They was around some, some uh, unstable areas, some railroad tracks, some creeks. All three should be fine, at least physically, and released this morning. The GBI is now handling this investigation. They did respond to me this morning saying they're working on a release to tell us the name of this suspect shot and killed and more about the suspect now in jail and what he's charged with. In Gainesville, Steve Gelbach, Channel 2 Action News, Sunday. New from overnight, one person is dead after shooting at a biker's club in southeast Atlanta. Police say four people were shot at the Strikers Motorcycle Club on Moreland Avenue. The shooting happened around 3.30 this morning. Police say one person died at the hospital. They say two others are in surgery right now. We are working to learn the condition of the fourth person. A 17-year-old boy locked up on sexual assault charges is scheduled to have a bond hearing this week. His mother says he denies being involved in any rape. She told Channel 2's Tony Thomas why she believes her son is being blamed. Better for him to be with his mom than to be anywhere else, really. Because when he's with his mom, he's really good. 17-year-old Cameron Richard wasn't living with his mom, but at a group home last month when authorities say he and three other boys sexually assaulted a drugged and unconscious 16-year-old girl. A cell phone video of the incident circulated around South Gwinnett High School. Sabrina Beckett insists the girl is making up part of the story to save face after the video surfaced. Police say the teens left classes at South Gwinnett High in early May to do drugs behind the school in this area known as The Cut. I feel like they're trying to railroad him and put him, make him responsible for everything because of the fact that he's 17. The other three boys are 16 and considered juveniles under the law. Richard was charged as an adult. What should be done with your son? The, 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 the fact that he videotaped whatever, I, I'm okay, I have no problem with that. He's guilty of that. Rape? No. 
without a doubt. They say that he's bad and he's not. He really's not. He's a really good kid. Friends and family hope a judge next week will allow Richard out on bond as they try and fight the charges. I know my son. He did not rape that girl. Tony Thomas, Channel 2 Action News, Sunday AM. Richard is also charged with theft by receiving a connection with a burglary in the area. He's due in court on Thursday. A heated argument inside a Floyd County courtroom is getting national attention now. It included curse words and sexual references between a judge and a murder suspect. Channel 2's Baron Peterson reports the court transcripts show at one point the suspect threatened to murder the judge's family. It appears to be a quiet and calm Friday afternoon at the Floyd County Courthouse, but that apparently was not the case one week ago. I have never in all of my career seen an exchange like this. Atlanta defense attorney and former Fulton County prosecutor Tanya Miller could not believe her eyes when we showed her the official transcript of a hearing before Superior Court Judge J. Bryant Durham in connection with a murder case against defendant Denver Fenton Allen. The transcript shows the word-for-word -word exchange between judge and defendant that began shortly after Allen announced his desire to fire his public defender. It escalated into a string of F-bombs dropped by the suspect after the judge found him in in contempt of court. The judge said, if you say anything else, I'm going to add 20 days for everything you say. And Allen responded in a vulgar manner. The judge then challenged him again with 40 days. The response, vulgar again. The back and forth later included crude sexual comments from both defendant and judge. After Allen used nasty language to describe his sexual preference for boys, the judge retorted, you know, you look like a queer. He got down in the mud with this guy. And it went on and on and on. Baron Peterson, Channel 2 Action News, Sunday AM. A new judge has already been appointed to preside over Allen's upcoming murder trial. Now, obviously, there was a lot of this that we just couldn't put on TV, but we've posted the entire transcript on WSBTV.com. The Red Cross of Atlanta is honoring local veterans who are also mothers-to-be. The Red Cross held a baby shower for more than 60 expectant veterans at its Midtown Atlanta office on Saturday. The organization partnered with the Atlanta VA Medical Center. The moms-to-be received gifts like car seats, strollers, and diapers. Let's get another look at the roads this morning. Veronica Rell is watching for delays live in the traffic center. Hi, Veronica. Hello, Sophia. Good morning, everyone. Well, right now you are going to run into delays if you travel 75 northbound. We have road work between Delk Road and the 120 loops taking up at least two right lanes as you travel elsewhere over on I-20. Also dealing with some slow traffic now. 20 eastbound, we have construction from 285 out to MLK taking up two right lanes. And over in Henry County, don't forget about construction barrels. 75 southbound at 138 and it is slowing you down. Now let's travel outside, get a live look at Traffic Tracker 2. Elsewhere, though, 285 at Shamley Tucker, you're moving well. With Atlanta's best traffic coverage, I'm Veronica Harrell, Channel 2 Action News, Sunday AM. People are unloading truck after truck at a county landfill trying to get rid of trash before the price jumps. We asked what's behind the big increase. Plus, only Channel 2 Action News went along with state health officials looking for a type of mosquito that can carry the Zika virus. The neighborhoods they believe it will hit this summer.